It is very easy to bow to the wish of a big power. It is another matter to resist. Dag Hammarskjöld was a widely admired Secretary General of the United Nations who died in a mysterious plane crash during the height of the Cold War. From that day to this, speculation still abounds that this tragedy was no accident. At 47, Hammarskjöld is still the youngest person ever to be appointed Secretary General. Despite his relative youth, he already had a long-established career in public service in his native Sweden and throughout Europe. A brilliant economist, he had played a role in the concept and implementation of the Marshall Plan, the US-led effort to aid Europe's recovery from the ravages of World War II. Hammarskjöld was a compromise candidate for the job. The Soviets had refused to endorse Lester B. Pearson, but saw the Swede as a harmless technocrat who would not interfere unduly in the political machinations of international politics. In this, the Soviets had misjudged him. In his first few years, he was active in peace negotiations between Israel and Arab nations. He also negotiated the release of 11 Chinese-held U.S. pilots down during the Korean War and he was central to the international reaction to the Suez Crisis. Hammarskjöld's strong belief in peaceful resolutions served to irritate both sides in the Cold War, who preferred war by proxy or covert action as a means of resolving international crises. U.S. Secretary of State Alan Dulles described the Secretary General's interventions as troublesome, whilst the ever-paranoid Soviets believed him to be a stooge of the Western Allies. Hammarskjöld finally fell out with the Soviets over the sending of a UN peacekeeping force to the Congo during sustained instability in the rapidly fragmenting former Belgian colony. They demanded his resignation and replacement with a troika of leaders to balance the political direction of the UN. More trouble followed in the Congo when troops from the breakaway Congolese region of Katanga fought with UN peacekeepers. Hammarskjöld left immediately to broker a ceasefire. Around midnight on the 18th of September 1961, the plane carrying his party went down near Ndola, northern Rhodesia, now Uganda. There were no survivors. An official inquiry found no evidence of a bomb, a hijack, or a surface-to-air missile. The report doubted the claims of many people who came forward with statements to the contrary. The investigation was troubled, however, by the delays in responding to the crash site. One passenger, Sergeant Harold Julian, had survived the crash but died later. Statements attributed to him before he died could not be verified, but fueled the rumours and conspiracy theories. The Soviets were not the only ones with a possible motive. Western and South African intelligence agencies were meddling in the Congo situation, anxious that mining companies would not lose access to the country's vast mineral wealth. In 1998, during South Africa's Truth and Reconciliation Commission, Archbishop Desmond Tutu spoke of the discovery of documents implicating Western and South African intelligence in a bomb or sabotage plot. However, there are considerable doubts as to whether the documents are genuine. Two former National Security Agency operatives, based at separate listening stations in the Mediterranean that night, have claimed that they monitor radio transmissions of a fighter jet that shot Hammarskjöld's plane down. Both have claimed they will be vindicated by the release of NSA recordings and documents Thus far, the U.S. government has refused to declassify any such materials, if they exist. In 2013, air accident investigator Sven Hammerberg was appointed to study the case once more and report any new findings to the United Nations. Comparing the chart used by the UN pilots to his own study of the terrain surrounding Indola Airport, he made a shocking discovery. 
The pilot's chart did not show a 4,000-foot mountain located west of the airfield. He also found that the pilots had been on duty for 17 hours that night. The pilots had descended below the safe altitude of 5,000 feet, losing sight of the runway. Hammerberg concluded that the pilots crashed into a mountain that they had no idea was there. In aviation parlance, a controlled flight into terrain. After nearly 60 years of theories and speculation, it seems that there was no sinister hand behind the tragic death of the man who the Financial Times called, as recently as 2011, the benchmark against which all later UN Secretary Generals have been judged.